Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the Sony Bravia 8. I've been waiting a while to get this TV out of the box, and the day has finally arrived. Now, this one uses WOLED technology, and if you're looking on the market for OLED, you will see one that says QD OLED, and some of the benefits of that TV is that it could be much brighter than this television, but I'm pretty sure that Sony's color science, their processing is gonna make this TV look fantastic. So with that being said, on this video, we're gonna get it out of the box. I'm gonna walk through the menu, see if I can find anything that's new and great, let you take a look at that, and we'll do some gaming and more. But stay tuned, I will be making a full review. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below, and we'll use that information to make the full review. With that being said, let's get into it. So let's go ahead and get all the accessory out of the box. And the cool thing about this TV is that they do make it a 55, 65, which I have here, and they do make a 77 inch if you want a larger one, but you can't get it smaller and they do not make this in an 83 inch, just so you know. So in the box, we have some feet here made out of metal, which is cool. We have, um, looks like some different clamps to cover up the back of it. We also have instruction book, power cord, and we do have the remote control, which is kind of basic. I mean, this is a fairly expensive television. And one thing I like about Sony is they still use these little plastic clamps down here. And this allows you to reuse the box fairly easy. And one of the cool things is once you take out the plastic pieces, you can just lift the box right up. So here's the feet that comes with it. And these are solid metal. And the cool thing about this TV is you can mount the feet on the inside or you can put them on the outside. Plus you can raise the TV up or put it down. So the great thing is you can put them like this, kind of locks them in place and you put the screws inside. But since I have this off, I'll go ahead and measure the distance on the 65 inch for the feet. So you're looking about 22 inches on the inside and on the outside about 48 and a half. So if you have a sound bar or anything that needs to go below it, that's the measurements for it. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the outside with the gap on the bottom of it. So, uh, so we can go and get this all set up. And one thing I'll say about the Sony is that they always think of all these details. So once we get this in, in the box, they, they even include this right here. Just a little cover. Look at that, clean. And another thing you get in the box are these covers. So I will be showing you the inputs, but this kind of give you an idea of how that looks. They also give you uh, these covers down here that covers up the extra holes that you're not gonna be using for the mounts. Look how clean that is. Now over here, we see a subwoofer uh, right there. It looks like around three inches. And then there are some uh, holes right here so you can screw it onto the wall if you get a wall mount bracket. It uh, looks like a ventilation slot on this, each side here for tweeters. And one thing I noticed here is that this TV does not have the webcam uh, little cutout like you get on the Bravia 9. One thing I like about this TV over the Bravia 9 is that you can change the power cord. So as you can see here, if you need longer power cords, you can just unplug it and plug the one that you need right into it. The Bravia core has Wi-Fi built in, plus it has plenty of connections. Over here, we have two USBs. One of them is USB 2.0, the other one's 3.0. We also have an ethernet output. And if you have a Sony audio system that supports it, you can use the TV speakers as part of your audio system. Down here, we have four HDMIs. Two of these are HDMI 2.0s, two of these are HDMI 2.1s, and one of them is shared eARC for a soundbar. We also have ethernet and some other connections. And down here at the bottom, we do have an ATSC 3.0 TV tuner. So now I got the TV set up. I just want to check the speed of the interface. And as you can see, it's pretty quick. So you're not going to have any problems having lag on this television when it comes to the interface. Now this is powered by Google TV and inside of here you get the Google TV channels. Plus you can scan for your own channels with the ATSC 3.0 TV tuner. There's an app store and this is Google applications. So you can find just about anything that you're looking for. And again, check out the speed of this interface. So far as searching, you can use the Google hands-free and there's a switch here at the bottom of the television. 
or you can use this search feature on a remote control. What's the weather like today? For the most part, you can ask the TV directly so you don't have to use your smart device. So we'll just go over some of the basic things you need to know inside of here. First thing under channel input, you can set up your external devices. And I do have a PS5 and Xbox set up to it. And you can use the TV to control cable boxes as well as satellite boxes. A lot of companies use the official name, which is CEC, but as you can see here, Sony called theirs Sony Sync Control. It does pretty much the same thing. And if you have uh, different sound bars and things like that, the TV can talk to them. Now, this is very important. If you plan on connecting 4K devices, you need to go switch this over. And a lot of gaming consoles, it'll do it automatically, but just letting you know. Now, input three and four can be a little tricky. And the reason I say that is because if you wanna use variable refresh rate, you can see down here, it automatically connects to that device that way. But if you turn this off, then you can select the other formats. So if you have a gaming console connected to this television, it'll be fine. But if you're not planning on using a variable refresh rate, but if you're not using a gaming console, you'll need to go in here and manually disable this. Now I showed you this on the Bravia 9. Whenever you hit display and sound, once you click on it, it'll automatically switch to input one. And then you get this menu over to the side. So you can basically change all your picture types and sound types right here. Same thing for audio. And then you have ambient optimized pros which uses the light sensors in a TV to automatically adjust the picture quality. Now, if you plan on using the TV speakers, you can go in here and do what they call acoustic calibration. And what you're gonna do is use the remote control where you normally set and the TV will optimize the sound for that particular position. Now, since this is a OLED panel, a lot of people worry about the TV getting burned in. So they do have what they call pixel shift. It is not recommended to turn this off. So what it'll do is it will shift the pit holes from time to time to make sure it doesn't get any image retention. And you can also refresh it right here. Now keep in mind, it will turn the TV off and then back on. Another thing I'll note here is that if you don't wanna use the hands-free Google, you can just simply opt out of it. But if you leave it on, you'll have to turn the microphone on the bottom TV off. Otherwise it will be listening just like any other Google device. So far as the OS, this does have the newest and greatest, which is called Android 12. Another feature that I like in here is called auto clock display. So you can have it once an hour, always on to display the clock over in the corner. I did expect a little bit more, but this TV has 17 gigabytes of built-in internal memory. I would think that it'll be 32 gigabytes that you can have access to. You also have the ambient mode, which is standard in Google TVs. Of course, there's an eco dashboard. This is pretty standard in all the Sony televisions, but it gives you a summary of what's set up on the television. So if you want to go in and make adjustments on it, you can do it easily from this particular screen. You can cast your device over to it using an Android device. Also, you can turn off the system sound. So as I'm moving through here, I have the volume down, but there is a beep every time you press something. So I like to leave that off. You have parental control, and if you get that Bravia cam, you can use gestures with it so you can do different events. And this is a feature that a lot of people might like is as you move around, you can see that little light that blinks right there. You can go over here and turn that off if you like. This TV does support Apple AirPlay, which allows you to cast your iPhone, iPad, or computer over to it. And they also support HomeKit, so you can connect it to your Apple ecosystem and use voice commands to control basic features on the television, including turning it off, setting up routines and things like that. I also want to show you the bottom menu. As you can see here, they did change the menu around quite a bit, but they do have some new features called voice zoom. And this allows you to increase the voice and I'll put that on the full review, but just kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. And you can customize this any way you like so you can set up just the features that you need and not have to look at all those other icons that you won't use. So I have the TV in gaming mode. Now we're gonna check the input lag. And keep in mind, this is only a 60 Hertz tester, but we're getting about 20.9 milliseconds. And when I turn off variable refresh rate, it dropped down to 12.5 milliseconds. And when I put it in standard format, it's looking at 12.6 milliseconds. So the variable refresh rate is definitely for gaming consoles, but you can see this TV has a decent input lag overall. So now let's see what it can handle with the PS5. And what we're gonna do is go over here to info and connected devices. 
As you can see on 4K, it will support variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz and HDR is supported. If you go to 1080p, the same thing. Again, if you're doing 4K or 1080p, you will not have any problems with this TV. Now, when it comes to 1440p, on a PS5, you can see that this TV does not support that particular output. And I can go in here and turn off variable refresh rate. And as you can see, it's getting the same results. Now let's switch over to the Xbox Series X. The first thing I want to see if 1440p is an option and you see that it's not. It will support 4K, 1080p and 720p. If we go to TV details, this TV supports everything that has to do with 120 hertz plus it will support Dolby Vision for Adobe Vision Gaming. If we go to video modes, you can see it does support pretty much everything and we already know that it will support variable refresh rate, but I prefer to leave it on gaming only. Now, if we have to, let's just try to override the HDMI connection to see if we can get 1440p out of it. Okay, now we override the television and now I see 1440p as an option and it did accept the signal. And when I switch 1440p, 120 hertz, it dropped down to 1080p resolution. So if you're in a bind and you really need to play 1440p, 60 hertz is what you're gonna get, but I just recommend you leave the default settings and play 4K at 120 hertz. So now I'm gonna put the TV back in the factory settings, but is it just me or Xbox? You have to select these one by one to put the TV back in 4K. It should be just apply all or something like that. It's kind of silly that you have to do these one by one. This Bravi 8 does have a game bar. You need to press and hold down the menu on the remote control and you get this pop-up. So the first thing I wanna show you is picture modes. And as you can see here, as I change through here, it changes the black EQ as well. So it's basically setting the TV up to give you the best experience. Next, we have variable refresh rate. Down here, you have that black EQ. Again, you have low, medium, high, and then you have your screen size. So you can customize it to full screen or smaller. Now, if you need to customize the screen size, you can go into this menu right here, and this is gonna allow you to adjust the size of it. Not sure why they have this in here because I guess for some people, you just wanna make sure you fit a game the proper way. Next, we have crosshair, which puts this little dot here in the center, and then you can customize it at the end right there. Another thing I wanna point out here at the bottom, it will tell you the resolution of the television, the frame rate, as well as what signal is seeing, uh, the Dolby sound and all that good stuff. I wish they had it where you can have a little VRR or a frame rate uh, setting over here in the corner. Come on, just answer the door and he'll go away. You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. So that's all we have on this video. I just wanted to get out of the box and just take a first look at it. And so far I've been doing some tests on it and this TV looks amazing. Now it's not as bright as a mini LED television, but far as the black levels, being that it's OLED, it is inky and has great viewing angles as well. If you have any questions or if you have anything that you want me to do on the full review, make sure you leave that below so we can answer that while I film the video. With that being said, this is the last TV I'm unboxing for now. So we're going to go back and review all the unboxings that I did. And hopefully we'll get you all the answers that you've been looking for. And then later on, we will compare this one against a Bravia 9. So stay tuned. If you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now because I have a lot of great things coming out. Plus, this helps us buy more televisions to review for you guys. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.